So, we're gonna talk about how I found freedom in an unfree world by Harry Brown or Brownie or something. I'm not quite sure, but I think it is a pretty cool book and this is also the reason why we're gonna go through it. And there it is. Um, the link to the summaries is always gonna be down in the description. This is by Nat Eliason once again. And yeah, it seems to be pretty good as he also says in this small little introduction. Excellent primer on pursuing more freedom in your life, very impersonal, egoist influenced, and it makes good arguments around honesty, priorities, and the traps that we put ourselves in. One of the few self-help books I would recommend, which which I guess, by the way, like it, it's not that of a, I don't really think that, 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 I don't know. I think there's a lot of bad self-help books. This is essentially what I want to say. Anyway, the premise of the book is that we live in an unfree world created by our beliefs and the environments we put ourselves in. Most of us strive for more freedom in our lives and this book explains how you can get it, focusing on the psychological and lifestyle shifts you need to make to get there. There are two main reasons you aren't free. You aren't aware of all the options available to you. Yes. And second of all, you've accepted certain assumptions that restrict your freedom. To become freer, is this a word? I don't know. You need to be more aware of your options and dispense with those bad assumptions. The traps. One big theme uh, in for why you aren't free is the traps that you put yourself in. Getting out of these mental traps is necessary for claiming your freedom. So let's see what these mental traps are. I know. The first one is the identity trap. The belief that you should be someone other than yourself. You are who you are. You can work on yourself, you know, but you just don't have to change who you are. Yeah, even, uh, nah, never mind. Uh, identity trap too. The assumption that others will do things they, the way you would. You can't control others' natures, but you can control how you deal with them. Just 100% the case. You're never ever going to be able to just, um, I don't know, change somebody. You're not going to be able to do that. The third one is the intellectual trap. That your emotions should conform to some preconceived standard. You are in the intellectual trap if you let your intellect tell you what you should feel. And this, by the way, is something that I've seen in myself. Um, because, you know, I thought like, well, there is, there is no reason why you should be sad. There's no reason why you should be mad or angry or something because there's no reason to. You have everything. Which is a very intellectual thought. Like, yeah, I have everything. But anyway, you know, this. I think it is just one of the... I mean, it just shows that 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 even though you are having everything, doesn't mean that you're going to be happy. Not necessarily. The emotional trap, the belief that you can make important decisions at a time when you're feeling strong emotions. You can't. You are in the emotional trap if you let your emotions make important decisions for you. A hundred percent the case. If you're in a bad mood, still do something. If you are in a good mood, still don't do something. Because who knows? I don't. The morality trap. The belief that you must conform to a moral code created by someone else. Yeah. Unselfishness trap. The belief that you must put others' happiness above your own. I don't think that you must, but I think that um, that it is not that of a bad thing, isn't it? I don't know. I just feel like that. that yeah. Group trap. The belief that you can accomplish more by sharing with and involving others instead of operating on your own. The government trap one, the belief that governments perform socially useful functions that deserve your support. The government trap two, the belief that you have a duty to obey laws. <laughs> yeah, you do. Therefore, we're having also laws most often. And most often they're smart, not always. Government trap three, and the belief that the government can be counted upon to carry out a social reform you favor. And the fourth one is... The fear that the government is so powerful that it can prevent you from being free. It can't. The despair trap. The belief that other people can prevent you from being free. The rights trap. The belief that your rights will make you free. You are in the trap anytime you count on anything other than an individual self-interest to cause him to give you what you want. The utopia trap. The belief that you must create better conditions in society before you can be free. You can't change the fate of a nation, but you can do a great deal to make sure you are not affected adversely by it. Burning issue trap. The belief that there are compelling social issues that require your participation. A previous investment trap. Sunk cost fallacy. The belief that the time, effort and money spent in the past must be considered when making a decision in the present. Now, 
it is sunk cost, you've already paid it, you've already done something. And so if there's something new, something way better, why should you do this other thing just because, you know, just because of the fact that you have already bought something or just paid money for it, even though it is something worse. Box trap, the assumption that the cost of getting out of a bad situation, any uncomfortable situation that restricts your freedom is too great to consider. No, it is not. There is always something. And and I don't know. I don't know. Certainly trap, the urge to act as if your information were totally certain. You are in a trap if you make decisions without recognizing the uncertainty of your assumptions and the risk that goes with that. There is nothing shameful in acknowledging that you don't have the answer to every question about life. Yeah. I think all these statements, um, what all these statements are basically saying, for me at least, is to calm down. And it is something that I've in general seen, like being more calm and not being so... um, My fucking phone cable is broken. Now I'm having a really hard time to charge my phone, essentially. But the thing is, you know, calming down a bit and and maybe it is also about seeing the reality as it is and then recognizing reality as it is and and understanding that things are not that bad and that things are are gonna be good in the in the future and that that I don't know, just such a lot of things, I guess. You know, all these traps, all these things that we ourselves get ourselves into and um there's like i don't know calm not in the sense of being calm and like just i don't know resting all day long and some bullshit like that but 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 seeing things how they are maybe just not being too emotional also about things you know because if you make a decision you're just humongously emotional then yeah of course you're gonna make a decision based on this emotion so which I don't know, it's not always that good. Yeah, anyway, direct actions. One big thing of one big theme of getting more freedom is uh, taking direction actions and making positive choices, focusing on what you can control instead of what you can't. A free person spends most of his time making positive des- positive decisions, choosing among a- choosing among attractive alternatives. Most people have spent most of their time making negative decisions, deciding which alternatives would be the least unpleasant, trying to keep things from getting worse. Choosing among attractive alternatives. Hmm. I think that this is something pretty common, isn't it? <sighs> Why well, is it tired? Boxes. Uh, Brownie or Brown also focuses a lot on boxes, unpleasant situations that restrict our freedom that you might be afraid to get out of. There could be anything, bad relationships, job, location, friendship, a big restriction of your freedom is the boxes you allow yourself to stay in for fear of the work you must do to get out of them. But there are two things to recognize. You're paying a price every day you remain in the box and you need to get out of, uh, you need to get over the sunk cost that he put that put you there and the second thing is there's always a way out you'll have to pay a price and that is uncomfortable but it is better than continue to pay the price of staying in the box whatever it might be um being in a better like i think just being in a better relationship might be one of the most quote-unquote common things isn't it you know that 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 i don't know there's just like why isn't this shit charging it is, it's such, such a pain in the ass. Just because I also don't really know why. Everything should actually kind of be okay. Sometimes it's working. Sometimes it's not working. Anyway. Um, yeah. There is always something to do. There is always a, a way to deal with things. And, and, and I would say like openly communicating about things is uh, probably one of the most important things there is. I don't know, also for yourself, and this is something that I've also been thinking about yesterday and also talking about yesterday, like, what will happen if you, I mean, if there is a person, you kind of think that this person doesn't like you, but you like the person, you are like, "Mm, I I feel like that you don't really like me. Is there just something to that? Is this the case? And, um, but I think therefore it is also very important to over-communicate that, that you're not going to be angry at this person. That you're not going to be like, ugh okay, you know, this is so bullshitty that I am this and I'm that and whatnot and you just don't really see myself and 
and whatever, but um, but they are indeed being like, well, I just I just want to know, I just want to know what's going on, I just want to know because I want to work with that. Um, yeah, you know, just 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 to work on myself and to use the feedback and try to see first of all whether this makes sense for me because of course there's always going to be some subjective things there's always going to be just some things that some people don't like um but it is fine and 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 yeah i don't know but maybe also the person just really likes you and it just feels like this person does not like you so who knows one habit he suggests getting into is to always look at the price to get out of a bad situation Ignore your annoyance and frustration. Look at what you have to do to get out of the situation. There's always a price to get out of it. And the sooner you pay the price, the less it costs you. And it is totally the case. If you see yourself getting into a very, very bad situation, one of the best things I think you can do is just uh, deal with it now. And because in the end, it's going to be fucked up. It's going to be shitty. It's not going to be good. You're going to feel bad. And then maybe even other people. Then look at your life and ask yourself, what could you do today that would give you more freedom tomorrow? What boxes have you resigned yourself to? The next chapter. How can you be free? This is the second section of the book. I found some parts more relevant than others, so these are my assorted notes from it. Don't be false or change your or change yourself based on your environment. Consist consistent action is part of freedom, and conforming to others' expectations is a form of giving up your freedom. What you are in the most valuable assets, asset you possess for finding others. What, what you are is the most valuable asset you possess for finding others. And the best way to find those people is to advertise what you really are. To make marriage and relationships work, each person should have their time alone, own friends and own interests. The time spent together should be preserved for things you enjoy together so that every moment together is a joy rather than a burden. And I think it is something that we all see. Like if you're just spending time with somebody, uh, with your spouse or whomever, just always, all the fucking time, it's not going to work out. If you feel imprisoned by your parents or relatives, it is you who must make the move to be free. No one else is going to bestow your freedom upon you. Don't overreact to a difficult relationship by destroying the good parts while trying to weed out the bad. Emphasize the good parts in discussion with the others but make it clear that you won't participate any longer in the bad parts. You're better off never worrying about small sums of money. I see people who will spend hours, if not weeks, pondering a 15 bill expenditure. 15 bill, yeah, 15 bucks. They feel they feel they have to because of their limited of their limited means. They never consider that fear means uh, that their means are limited partly because of the time they waste over pennies. I'm not sure about this. I think it's just about being, uh, I don't know, being conscious about your fucking expenditures. I don't know. When you prove that you're willing to be honest, no matter what the short-term consequences, others will accept your word more easily. When you prove that you're willing to be honest, no matter what the short-term consequences, others will accept your word more easily. I think it is in general something pretty cool to be just known as the person that is that is honest. And actually we're able to get through the whole one today. Living a free life. And this is the third section. More assorted notes. Brown's rules for life. First one. Never expect anyone to act from your knowledge, perspective or objectives. Assume that his viewpoints or her viewpoints will differ in some ways from yours. The second one. Never make an important decision when your emotions are dominating your mind. The third Never lie or appear to be something other than what you are, unless you are sure that your life or the life of someone very important to you is literally at stake. The fourth, never invest any resource, time, money, emotional evolve, meant that you're not prepared to lose. This is a very good one, I think. The fifth, never take on a responsibility, time commitment or liability without recognizing what must be given up to accommodate that because maybe um you just have to just i don't know not have or you just in the end not gonna have so much time for your kids or some other things that are very important for you um 
Always leave some free time in your schedule to take advantage of new opportunities as they arise. If there are no new opportunities during the period, the free time can always be used for pure pleasure. Never use someone's property in any way that he doesn't approve of, unless your life or the life of someone very important to you is literally at stake. Never focus your attention on anyone's weaknesses, his temper, sloppiness, poor logic, dishonesty, whatever. Recognize these shortcomings, take them into consideration, but don't waste your time complaining about them. Instead, pay attention to what your actions should be in order to deal with them. The ninth one, never quibble over a price you didn't expect to pay. Pay it and move on to better things. The tenth, never form a partnership, an agreement in which responsibilities are rewards or rewards will be shared for any purpose rather than love. Beautiful. Never become directly involved in violence unless it appears to be the only alternative to brand more serious injury to, yell to yourself or to someone very important to you. And the twelfth one and the last one, never forsake your rules because of someone's actions or opinions. When you achieve freedom from the urge to control others, your life is truly your own, to make of it almost anything you might want. And this is it, and I think it is a fucking good book. Maybe I'm actually also going to check it out, since it is very old, quite, that there might be some things that, that I can do. Maybe it's on the archive.org. Maybe it's there, but I don't know. But nevertheless, uh, I'm going to end the episode there. So I wish you the best health of happiness and also success. And also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then also being remembered as a nice person, which is a fucking cool thing. Really fucking cool thing. The question of the day is, what could you do? What could you make? What could you change to really make somebody's day? And three other questions that I'm having for you are, why are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is a fucking important thing. Especially the having meaning, meaning in life and also purpose. Really important. Um, so yeah, I am gonna see you, I guess. So bye-bye.